is the Glass Cannon Network. Hello again to all my friends. Together we can play some Delta Green. Hello again to all my friends. Together, Together we, can we can play, play some, some Delta, Delta Green. Green. Auto tune. Hello again to all my friends. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> the hell Get is that? the truck, Scroy. Scroy, <laughs> Troy, are you confused by my Skrillex open? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it was, and I don't like it. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. I was feeling. I just needed the the, the electronic beat behind yeah. it and a <laughs> lot of auto tuning, and it would have sounded <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> top, top ten <laughs> Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Sid. You and I should work on a little. Uh, I think yeah. we could do a cool remix. I think we could. I'm gonna, good. I'm gonna clip this and I'm gonna make a little something. Something I'll send it back to you. I like it. Little Skrillex's rock and roll remix to Delta Green to lighten the mood because uh, <laughs> things have been dark oh, in uh, Delta Green area lately. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Get in the Trunk here with my good friends playing some playing some Delta Green. Uh, oh, look at Sydney Sports. Sporting the merch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Official this. staff of the Glass Cannon Network. <laughs> this shirt is um, so comfortable, actually. I wear the shirt all the time. <laughs> I don't have one. What? I don't either. I actually <laughs> don't have one. Because the only one. time I had a chance to just like grab it in person was at the big re- uh, the release of the rebrand at Gen Con. And we were like, we can't take any of these. These are for customers. And then uh, ever since then, it's been like, yeah, I could get one sent to me. But like, do I really want to pay for the shipping? (laughs) I don't have one either. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, I just got to get my hands on one with no uh, shipping cost. And then I'll I'll be able to to rock it again. Francis, I never see you wearing any glass can of merch. WTF. I know, man. I got to get on the shop and uh, and download some of that and get some of that good stuff. I I saw the Frost Giant shirt. I kind of want to get. That. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. Shirt. I love the color too. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I really like that one. I wore it on stage where, Troy? Uh, Frost Giant, you wore on stage at St. Paul. That's right. Uh, Same. I could picture the green room, but I was like, which green room is that? Which green room is that? I write down yeah. all of your outfits. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. Every time you I remembered. See you. I've got a little notebook. <laughs> Dude, this is so brutal for me. So when I went to school, all my years in uh, Catholic school, pre-college, so all my elementary school and all my high school was all Catholic school and was all uniform the whole way through. And I just loved it because you didn't have to like you know, look good. Like you didn't have to dress uh, cool and you didn't have to have, a, a, you know, a lot of different clothes or whatever. And I've always been complete, like so incredibly unstylish and I, and I just not good at it at all. And I, uh, this job has been really painful. It's been a couple years since we went to video. It's been a couple years of like touring and video and you're on different shit every single day. And I'm just kind of like, how do people have this many different clothes so that they're not like repeating <laughs> the same shit all the time like i don't know sydney you do not wear a lot of the same shit on these streams and i just don't know how that's possible like how can you have that many different combinations of of outfits i have too many clothes that is the answer <laughs> i have too many clothes and it's it sucks because it's like in that sense with my job with like working with you guys you have different clothes for different things like you you keep your graphic tees when you're like oh my weekdays you know maybe on a stream i wear a graphic tee but then i have my nicer clothes for if i go out to dinner or when we're on tour if we like go to a dinner together i don't want to just wear my sh- shirt i'm going to wear on the show like i want to wear a nice shirt yeah so, that would be stupid <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be like a total schlub and wear the same thing <laughs> but yeah no i've i've come to have this problem though we're looking through my closet i'm like ah oh, i don't really wear this that often but it serves a specific purpose and i can't get rid of it like i have painting clothes i have the clothes i wear when i fucking paint and they're covered in paint they're trash, but I have to keep them <laughs> so I don't ruin like my nice glass cannon shirt, you know? So I have too many right. clothes, too many. Well, that's a, that's a good problem to have. Uh, not in New well, York City. <laughs> it's a bad problem. Yeah, not if you got to move. Not if you got to yeah. move. 
Uh, what about you, Francis? Do you get self-conscious about style and fashion at all? Or are you, you just know, like, I got this? I used to. And then I was like, I'm over 40. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just it, it's don't over. care. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to prove anything anymore. I'm like, is it comfortable? I'm in. That's it. If, it, if it's as long as it's not like, you know, I don't know like bearing my nipples or anything like that. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. <laughs> Which is often a struggle because it's just those clothes that bear your nipples are so comfortable. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it makes, it makes for a difficult uh, decision. Uh, uh, Skid, your thoughts, uh, fashion. I love your t-shirts. I think you get great t-shirts. Um, Thank you. yeah. How, how much thought do you put into these? Where, where do you shop for those amazing t-shirts? Uh, there's a couple different places on the, uh, internet that I go to find, uh, limited edition, weird geeky t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to share all my trade secrets, but <laughs> yeah, my man, I did around. a show with someone in college and they were like, <laughs> look, it was like, Mainly just try to be comfortable, right? <laughs> and what you're wearing. I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's been my main uh my main focus. Troy, how many pairs of jeans do you own? One. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> and I wear them until my balls begin to dangle out of the hole in the car. <laughs> it's, it's I'll wear them for another three months and then I I'll buy a new pair. I see this balls. Uh, it's gross. And as for shirts, <laughs> I've seen them on num numerous games. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate. As for shirts, I, I own my all my t shirts are from breweries and I have hoodies. And only recently did I buy different color hoodies of the hoodie that I like. But because there's just so much going on, by the time we sit down to record, I end up just grabbing the nearest hat that I have sitting on this couch over here and the nearest hoodie. And I'm sure if you look at the last seven episodes of shows that we've recorded, I'm wearing this exact same combo. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's the last thing I do. I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, is everything good? Good, ba, 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 ba. and then I just grab whatever's here and throw it on and change my lights. So the lights may change, uh, but the hoodie and the hat will pretty much remain. <laughs> will always remain. I shower. It was, it was so funny on tour, Troy. This is how I found out about Troy's one pant rule. And we were in the car and he, we were eating like hot dogs or something. It was something messy. And he got like a huge glob of like ketchup or mustard on his jeans. And he was like, ah, oh, shit, these are my only pants. <laughs> and I was like, these are the only <laughs> pants you brought on like a four day trip? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, you didn't bring any other, no shorts, no. And you were like, why would I? And I'm like, for this reason, because you just got shit on your pants. You're like, I'll clean it up. I got to no, wear we these were for like, the show. You, why didn't you bring any other pants? And he was like, because I don't I, have any other <laughs> pants at home either. <laughs> This is I my pants. One pair. It just seems crazy to have more than one pair of pants. Uh, hey, you're I like a, shorts. You're like a Steve Jobs. I can't. I can't fault you. You're a genius, and you have one hoodie and one pair of pants. <laughs> Makes things easier. I just really like that sentence. I want to keep saying it. It sounds so good. Which one? This is my pants. This is my pants. This is my pants. This is my pants. This is my one pants. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This is my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back uh, into, uh, oh man, Boston, Mass, 2015, the year of Troy's bachelor party in Boston, yeah. the oh, year yeah, of Troy's buddy. wedding, the year of my wedding. Let's uh, stop by and to... say hi to us at Fenway. Yeah. yeah, come stop. <laughs> yeah, say hi to us. Apparently, there was a Delta Green operation going on <laughs> in the <laughs> very <laughs> stadium <laughs> we were Let's in. Let's interrogate ourselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, last week, you guys had a little bit of a break in the case as Bobby well, I mean, I feel like right now it's every week you're getting breaks upon breaks upon breaks in this case. It's just wild. Bobby getting in contact with a cell of Delta Green and finding out that uh, that uh, Agent Exeter was already known to be compromised in some way and was under the um, was uh, was part of it was the operation. He was the operation for Agent Vega to investigate and look into. And at that time. Um, oh, and also, uh, he added the, the voice on the other end of the phone added that your operation, Operation India Moon, that was given to you by Agent Exeter, does not exist, oh, according to, to Delta that was Green. The that was like a stomach drop feeling. Like, yeah. I was just like, fuck, we're so <laughs> stuck in this. Like, we're so <laughs> fucked. You know, I didn't say this, but it makes me think that 
this is an inside job to get us here. Yeah. Like purposefully we're, we're here there. They need us to be here, but like, why wouldn't they just try and like, why doesn't Dallin do whatever he does to us? It's coming. He's gonna be like, why don't you just sit here and look at this watch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's gonna who, who do you think the inside job is, is by Delta green? No, yeah, I mean, some, that's always somebody. a problem. Like I always think that we're being had by our own organization or an organization within an organization. But I think whoever is at the head of this, if it's a cult or whatever, like they need us. We are a key oh, in some I way. See. And so this fake operation is all part of getting us trapped just like everybody else. But right. why us? I don't so you know. Think, are we you think conduits? Exeter is you think Exeter is in it, is trapped. I think he was I think he was let in and was trapped. I think that he was like maybe in our situation. Maybe every they just keep bringing in these agents and mm. they but I don't know why us. It's just yeah. I don't yeah. Know. That's why I don't think we I, I don't Bobby does not want to go into the night floors again. We should, we need to do some more digging out outside I think of the The operation is a trap. It is a right. trap that we have walked right into. Right. Okay. But we haven't been ensnared just yet. But it's also clear that this is still a le- now it is like a legitimate Delta Green operation. This is something that we need to take care of, even if it is a trap. Right. Mm-hmm. Like this same phenomenon of the night force is happening here. Mm-hmm. So we have to do something about it. Yeah. You know? It's very interesting. I think what really stands out to me is the irony, Troy, in you describing your always paranoia about your handler and the organization that they're all trying to get you and screw you and the organization within the organization, et cetera. And this Operation India Moon is the first time I can remember that you didn't ask one question about the handler or mistrust the handler or like (laughs) look into the handler or tell the handler to go fuck himself before like running out of the meeting or or threaten his life for more information. Like you just said, okay. And and I was like, what is happening? (laughs) This is the one time this guy, (laughs) this actually isn't legitimate. And and you guys are just- He was so thrown off by Vicky. And Vicky was so thrown yeah. off by him. It was yeah, so fucking awkward in that point. room. We just wanted to leave. Like, yeah. I didn't ask questions either. I was just like, okay. Yeah. There was a lot Compromise. of emotions, like, getting us all together. We just, it was like re- reliving the trauma. So, it was, we're a little off. We were a little Compromised off. by these emotional complications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes Blinded sense. Us to some of we're the ones who are compromised. Ooh. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Francis is loving it. I'm feeling this. I'm totally feeling this. <laughs> Think about that. Let's get dark. <laughs> Let's get into it. When last we left our heroes, you had uh, gotten an address for Dr. Elias Barbas, who could be the same person as Agent Exeter. Um, uh, Dr. Elias Barbas, a detective in the Massachusetts State Police who seemed to have a sterling career until things suddenly took a strange uh, turn in June, according to his records, uh, and he began to get a lot of complaints, and then he was put on a leave of absence in late June. It is now September 2nd or 3rd. I think it's September 3rd. Yeah, it's September 3rd right now, and you guys have pulled up to the residence of Dr. Elias Barbas to see what is going on here, maybe do some surveillance. And as uh, as you pull up, you notice a two-story red home, uh, kind of a rusty, red with a bit of rust to it color. Uh, it is, uh, the lawn is, uh, looks like nobody's been taking care of it for a long time. And there uh but and that is kind of like in contrast to the neighbors which are all abutted right up against this house it's a small suburb with small houses and small yards that are all kind of right on each other and a lot of the other yards are kind of meticulously taken care of and you know there's really pretty plant plants and everything in this neighborhood but this house seems to be like getting let go a little bit there is no car in the driveway there is no evidence that anybody is there at the moment. Uh, all the windows are closed. All the drapes are pulled. Uh, the door is closed, uh, and there and there is no car. This is what you pull up and see. Tell me what you do, Roger. Uh, what time of night is, or time of day is it? That was really loud. Oh, it was spooky. <laughs> yeah, that, that hit a little hard. Uh, the drive to Medford from Dorchester, what's that going to take you? 20 minutes? 
It's not, it's not far, right? No, okay, so it's still light out. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like early afternoon. Yeah, early afternoon. Roger pulls up and just uh, immediately hops out of the car and starts walking towards the back of the house. And we'll kind of turn back if the other car is pulling up and just be like, go to the front. With hand signals, he says, go to the front, and he's already walking. Roger, go ahead and give me a stealth check. No problem. (laughs) It's going to be a sweet little 47 under 74. Okay. Nice. Nice. You slip into the backyard uh, of the house. And you are seeing, you know, still no, no indication that anybody's there. There is no car in the back and there, you know, the lawn is a little out of control. Uh, and you see a porch and a back door. Porch and a back door. Uh, quick alertness scan of the area. I'm using that instead of Sorry, search. I'm sorry. Uh, I got that wrong. It, this is a stoop. Stoop up to a back door. Just, you know, four steps up to a small stoop and a, and a, a rear entrance to the house. <sighs> the door is a nine-window paneled uh, half-window half door, and it is uh, there's a curtain, and it is closed. Any any? Do I notice anything on the door? I, not, I don't need to search. Like, does the wood seem splintered like someone broke in or anything? Any obvious signs of... Nope, everything okay. looks totally normal. Quick search scan of the backyard. Ah, oh, I saw the zero, I got excited. Uh, it's a fail. Um, so I will just try Oh my the- God, sorry, that reminds me, thank you. Uh, I want everybody, I don't want to do this uh, on air, I want everybody to just real quick, I've been, I, I, I wanted to do this uh, at the start of episode eight. Want everybody to level up all of your skills oh. that you have checked. Oh, yeah. I was gonna oh, ask. Yay. So, yeah. What do we so roll? Go- Go ahead, do a pass through, and everybody can roll one d three for each skill, and add that many points to the skill. Okay. Uh, and uh, Fuck. Uh, you don't have to tell me everything you got, but we'll just just do it in the background. Okay. Roger. Oh. You, so so you can check search again now. Oh, to uh, every skill. No, to every skill no, that you checked. Oh, okay, so it's right, okay. it's the skills you failed gotcha, so gotcha. far in the first seven episodes gotcha, of this gotcha. season. Gotcha, gotcha. This is so awesome. All right, nice. Um, great. I'll leave that checked, and then I up to the other ones. All right. So I, I failed my search. Um, I'm just going to check the door to see if it's unlocked first. It is locked. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have. I don't think there's a, there's not a lock picking skill. But does that fall? I under think it's something? criminology, right? It's under craft. You can pick what like craft has locksmith. Oh. Okay. So it's craft locksmith. You need to have craft locksmith, and you need to have special training in lock picking. Not Who necessary. are you? How'd you get in here? He's gonna he's gonna uh, hold the 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 doorknob really tight and just shoulder his way in. Like, boom! Homeowners Association, freeze! If there's not a deadbolt, that thing should <laughs> pop open with these. If there's a deadbolt, then I probably need to roll. Okay, just want to be clear here. You're breaking the law, and you're aware of this, right? I'm above the law. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Are we here yet? I am, I am above the law. <laughs> We're just in you the front are. yard. You guys. Yeah, you know what? I mean, we don't. Hey, we don't hear you him. You know what, cracking Sydney? Just let the scene happen. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me another stealth roll. Stealth. Uh, that's fifty under seventy-four. Fifty under seventy-four. You bang into the door. And the sound seems actually kind of muffled. You're really controlled in how you do it. And you do break the door open. And in so do you, bam! And you hear a noise in the backyard that shares the backyard with this house across a fence. Now you're up on the stoop. I hear a noise in the backyard that shares a backyard. So there's like a fence, like somebody's sitting out there. Okay. So you hear a noise, uh, and you can, if you turn, you can see them. Okay. Uh, who is, what do I see? You see a woman, uh, an older woman, and oh, she is uh, knitting on a brick patio over there, and she's not looking at you. Okay. Okay. Uh, he just kind of looks at her, memorizes her face, and then 
slowly shuts the door, pushing the little splinters of wood that there may be, like, out of the way. Okay. Neil, Vicky, <coughs> Bobby, mm-hmm. you guys pull up to the house, as we said, as we established last week. Do you walk? <coughs> what do you do? I mean, we got to go in. I mean, if there, if we see Roger going in, I feel like we got to follow. I'm you don't follow. see Roger going in unless you tell me you went to the backyard? We don't well, I was know. Saying, I waited for the, well, as they were pulling well, up. He, Roger yeah. was already out of the car, saying like, "Go yeah. to the front. I'm going to go to the yeah. back." Yeah. yeah. I think before we go to the front door, uh, Vicky wants to check the mail. Is there a mailbox or is it like a mail slot that they have on the door? Oh, good call. You're always thinking about the mail. I'm obsessed <laughs> with the mail. That's her, that's her <laughs> thing. It's my job. It's my thing, guys. That's Vicky. There you go. Roger hears the mailbox open. That's Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> good old Vicky. That's Vicky. You get up to the porch and you look in the mailbox. The mailbox is um, stuck open, filled with mail that is now falling out of it and it's all over. Some of it has fallen onto the porch and you're seeing all kinds of various mail that would be really good clues to have. Yep, she just scoops the mail uh, into her bag and- It's a lot of mail. She got a big bag. Okay, so it's, you're she's filling up your bag. You're filling up your big <laughs> old mail, mail bag. bag. She, mail she bag. pulls out. She's, she's always got a, a mail bag. <laughs> she's not a postman. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, takes no. out her. She has a surplus like old uh, mailman's bag. Her <laughs> mandatory <laughs> purse. Yeah, Just her mandatory case. mail bag that all postal inspectors <laughs> get, and she whips it out, shakes it open, blows the dust off. <sighs> Haven't broken out this bad boy in a while. Uh, she d- puts the mail in her tote bag that she has, and she looks at Bobby to go to the door. All right, Bobby heads up to the front door, takes a look around. Anything strange about the front step or the, the on the way up to the front door? Just the amount of mail. Just the amount of mail. Okay. Um, Bobby looks looks at the looks through the window. Is there a window next to the door? Can he look inside? Everything is clo- curtains Everything. are closed. Curtains Everything's are closed. closed. <laughs> Roger okay. peeks his head up. Jesus Christ! All right, so it's right at this time that you you hear a slight boom. <laughs> Okay. Of what sounds like Roger making a forced entry into the rear of the home. Okay. Bobby knocks three times. Knock okay. three times. Uh, all right, then let's cut back to Roger. Roger, boom, you slowly close this door behind you. Gun out. Hold on, I'm going to just change this tone Two sawed-off shotguns come out of his duster. Uh, you close the <laughs> two sawed-off <laughs> shotguns. Are you joking? Just like he's ready. No, uh, he does have a gun. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, your other guns, all, all of the rest of your guns are still in the safe at uh, at the mental uh, hospital because you Rogers. never asked for them back. Got plenty of guns. He's not worried. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you all, this you is all an everywhere. antique that was owned by Billy the Kid. <laughs> this is you, his day gun. <laughs> day gun. Day gun. Ah. As opposed to his night gun. Ah. This is day gun. He spins the, the barrel. Ah. <laughs> Champion of the gun. Champion of, <laughs> Champion of, of the night gun. gun. Ah. Champion of the gun. Champion of the gun. Oh, kid. Uh, you got me. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you turn around. Roger closes the door, pulls out a gun, and turns around. It is dark in here. Of course, it there is. is no no lights are on, and light from outside is barely creeping through the closed curtains. You can see, but everything's very dim. You are in the kitchen. You as you look around. You see refrigerator you see dishes piled in a corner um they're clean but they're broken a bunch of broken dishes piled up in the corner of of the counter you see um a drawer is open and it's a silverware drawer and all the silverware is in there neatly but you see that there is a film of dust over over the silverware huh fuck you here on the fr- at the front door 
Okay, just a general alertness check. So I'm dry. I want to. Is there anything else I hear in the house? Uh, Fifty-one under eighty-two. Like just. He's hyper alert. I bet he is. <laughs> hyper alert. If there was an ant making love in the second floor bedroom, <laughs> he would hear it and know who's on top. <laughs> there was an ant making love. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ants do it like us. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> they get loud. Very. They get very romantic. Troy, are you <laughs> sipping? Are you sipping the trilogy? Sipping on gin and booch. That's the oh, trilogy one. That's my favorite booch. one. This is your favorite one. That's my favorite one. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I'm a big fan of the peach and the pink lady apple one. The I love. Trilogy's fine. I like the pink lady apple too. I'll try the peach. I did the uh, mango recently. It was okay. Peach All right, Bobby knocks on the door one more time. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Listen to Ants make a love. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is my fault. I, 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 to ants we're out here. We're out I wanted here. to give you the right answer, and I that's feel the one like, I want. Yeah, that answer Booch. should be should be right. Is it boot related? Boom, 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 boom. You ants keep it down in there. (laughs) I can hear you ants. There's children in this neighborhood. (laughs) Vicky tells Bobby to stop knocking. He's listening to the ants. Just give him a second. Just give him a fucking second, okay? Let him finish. Let them finish. (laughs) You listen, uh, and your successful alertness roll, you don't hear anything else besides the knock. All right. He will... It's a big long. Is it a long house? Like, can I see the front door from the kitchen? No, it is a square-shaped house. Um, you have oh, to Boston Square. From the uh, from the kitchen, Cape you Cut. need to you walk you walk directly across from the back door. The uh, range and refrigerator are right in front of you. To their right is a door that opens that that is um, a doorway that is just open, not without a door in it, and that goes into uh, a dining room. You can see there's a dining room table, and then. The dining room has double doors that are open and go. You can look into a living room, and it, and in that living room is the front door. So you're okay. kind of straight across from the front door through two rooms: the dining room and the living room. He's going to slowly walk from where he is all the way to the front door, taking in his surroundings as he does. So I mean, we're seeing him. If there's anything weird or out of place, he's going to see it. But the one thing that I want to purposely search, uh, just out of habit, he wants to look in the refrigerator. Hmm. Before you go to the front door? Yeah, like as he's walking by, he just wants to quick peek in the refrigerator. You want to open the refrigerator, so he... I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> you said quick peek in the refrigerator. I assume that yes. means you open it. Yeah, so open. He, uh, he opens up the refrigerator, and from the touch of the outside to opening it up, you just you open it up, and you get a waft of kind of just stale, warm air. And yeah. the refrigerator is just uh, warm. Off. Oh, power's off, probably, so they probably the turn off the power. Been cut. Yeah. It's been a while. Okay, he wait. Was, oh. He's married. Did we find that out that he was married? I was going to ask that in the case file that I have when I reviewed it in the car. I don't know if we ever, maybe I forgot. Was he married? No, he was not married. Okay. And no kids or familial? Not, not, not in the file, no. Okay. Uh, there is a body in this house. Uh, all right. I'm going to just then keep walking to the straight to the door, looking knock, knock, knock. around as I do so. <laughs> Uh, okay, you walk in through the living room area, and you see. I say the dining room because it's right off of the kitchen, but like y- you wouldn't know that a hundred percent. Like looking at this house, because as you walk through, there is no dining room table. There are no dining room chairs. There is no couch, chairs, coffee table in the living room. There is nothing in there. And as you walk through into the dining room, and then sub- subsequently into the living room. The overwhelming, an overwhelming smell hits your nose. It is the smell of oil, like as if you are in like a mechanic's garage, basically. And oil. these, the floors are basically cleared, and you see that they're, but they're stained with oil, like uh, again, like it looks on the floor of a mechanic's garage. And wow. then, and then there's the front door. <laughs> any, Boy, uh, <laughs> any 
Uh, there's no contraption that it looks like this oil is coming from, like some sort of time machine. Yes, there's a big there's machine. A machine. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big machine uh, off to the side. Are you shitting me or is this real? A huge machine. It looks like it might travel through time. Stop it! <laughs> you see a large machine on the on one wall uh, away from the door to your right as you're looking at the front door. When you say machine, what would it resemble in our world that I could notice? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Maybe a small oil rig. But like, but like mini. So like, it has like kind of like these arms kind of sticking off of it and a kind of boxy base. And that's no like door the best way, or anything. That's the best way I can describe okay. it. I'll, I'll just continue to the front door. You're right at the front door now. This thing is like, you know, it is 10 feet away from you in this room while you're at the front door. He's watching it. I'm assuming there's stairs to the house nearby. Yep, right there. Right behind you, basically right off from the front door. Looks up the stairs and then uh, just does a quick peek out the curtain. And you see Bobby. And he's just going, what the fuck? <laughs> Roger says, where's my pizza? <laughs> 30 minutes late. That pizza's free. That pizza's free. Is, there, is, it, is the room clear? Is the house clear? Not really. Come on in. All right. Bobby steps in. Vicky follows. As do Neil. <laughs> 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 I already forgot what did we say. What did we say? These my these are my pants. These are <laughs> this is my pants. This, this is, is my, my pants. pants. <laughs> this is my pants. <laughs> this is my pants. <laughs> my pants. Um, so we look around, and it's the same. All right, same hold on scene. a second. Hold on a second. So okay. you step into this room, and you, as you open the door, light kind of like comes pouring in for a moment, and you see not only these stains, but you see these dark sort of. Um, uh, there were uh, dark objects all along the floor, and as the door opens up, you see there's a bunch of books on the floor, like scattered kind of haphazardly around the living room. There's a bunch of random books, and um, and then this this machine in the corner. Um, do you uh, do you all walk in from the outside? Yeah, yeah he mm -hmm. ushers everybody in and shuts the door again. Yeah. Okay, it's pretty dark in here, so seeing details is not really possible in this light. Um, well, you don't want to open too many yeah. curtains, but yeah, let's it must be a, like a side window that looks out on the, the walk to the back door to like just let some light in. Okay, so you're going to open a window to let some light in. Bobby, Kurt. Uh, Vicky, and Neil, please all give me a stealth roll. Oh, oh boy. Uh, somebody I just upped my stealth, I think. Oh, crap. Did I? Oh, no. Three. Three. Three under 30. Boom. Oh. <laughs> That's a 98 over ah. 11. Oh, no. Oh, Vicky trips in the dark and spills the mail <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> then oh, has to pick it all up for three <laughs> hours. Oh, no. I got a 17 over 10. 17 over 10. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so we'll say, Vicky, you go to sort of just like peel back one of the curtains from the windows to put some light into the room. Uh, and as you do, you step on a broken, you step on a broken piece of ceramic and it makes this cracking noise and then it slips out from under your leg and you kind of f fall a little bit and like bang into the side of the wall as you like catch yourself and then that ceramic cracks and pushes into some other ceramic and you see broken pieces of ceramic all up against this wall here and uh, it makes a bit of a racket and as soon as you do that boom you see as right up against that window where you opened up the curtain there's a man looking at you in the oh, house God. next door. Oh. Like from his window? From his window. He's oh. just looking uh, out and across, and he appears to be a young uh, Hispanic man. Uh, what do you do? Uh, Fast. What uh, do you do? Vicky, Shoot him. Messiah. No, uh, Vicky Messiah. has her hand on the window, and she like regains her, her composure. Um, look. And you see this guy's looking at you like, what the... And she gives like a wave and she reaches into her pocket and takes out her um, ID, her badge, oh. and pushes it against the window uh, and nods and tucks it back in 
and then just turns around back to the group. Okay. What, uh, that's, that's what was that all about? There is a man staring at us from a house over. I just flashed my badge. I'm... <sighs> I think we should do more than that. Yes. Roger. No witnesses. <sighs> On it. <laughs> we got to do it. Wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. Before we do this, before we do this. Roger just jumps out, out the window. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Like Obi-Wan just jumps we, out the window into his house. We should absolutely talk to the neighbors. I yeah. wanted to do that anyway. So if yeah. somebody wants to go over, I can go over there. Maybelline, yeah, yeah you should go. I'll go Maybelline. over there. Before um, she calls the real cops. You just, I am actually a federal agent. You just keep looking through the house. I will talk to this man and I will scope out um, how long Exeter clearly has not been here. All right? Yeah, Take care of it. Tell him we're doing a wellness check. She looks at Roger with such disdain um, and looks back at Bobby. I will tell him we're doing a wellness check. Thank you. All right. And she uh, walks out of the house brushing off herself because she maybe got a little oil on herself from slipping. <clears throat> she leaves. Uh, sorry, where are you going? I just want to go to that neighbor's house. Okay. Vicky's walking out. Um, I want to say that as she walks by to leave, we'll say that Neil, still about five, <laughs> ten feet away from you, on that far wall, is this imposing-looking machine. It is. It has these arms that are sticking up from it in these weird kind of angles, and then this kind of boxy base. Immediately, Neil, you recognize the mechanism that was drawn on the napkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God. Yeah, Neil pulls out his the flashlight on his phone and just gives it, just like casting this light over it, and. He pulls in, and he pulls out the either I think a, he has a in his notebook he has a sketch of that of that diagram that he did himself, and he's gonna like hold it up, looking at the machine and the diagram, confirming that that's what this is. Yeah, you can confirm that, and you know from your Portuguese translation that the word that was written on that napkin, you can still see it on the Polaroid, is lion. 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 <sighs> Let's cut over and outside the house to Vicky, <laughs> who walks up to the door of this uh, house. What do you do? Uh, knocks on the door. Just click, door opens. Yeah, can I help you with something? Hi, uh, the name is uh, Agent Isotope. Um, I'm a detective with the state uh, troopers. I was just doing a wellness check on your neighbor here. Um, Elias Barbas, is that who lives next door to you? Yeah, yeah, that's his name, yeah. Wellness uh, when, check, huh? Yeah, when's the last time you seen him? It doesn't seem like uh, anybody has been there for a while. Uh, he's He's in there every night. He's, he's usually around at night. I don't know what he does for work, but he's not here during the day. He actually huh. works for the um, uh, Boston State Trooper. Uh, that's not important. So you have seen him recently. Oh, he's a state trooper? Uh, no, he's a, he's a doctor. He works for them. Oh, oh okay. And you just hear, Daddy! And there's like this little girl comes running into the room. She looks like she's about four years old. Behind the little girl is Roger with a gun. <laughs> and uh, uh, stay and very still. Look at he's, you. <laughs> be very still. <laughs> and so this little girl comes running up, and he's like, "Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. Uh, hold on. Just give, just give me a second, please. Just give me a second. I'm talking to a police officer." Uh, and she's like, "Hi." <laughs> Vicky bends down. She goes, "What's your name?" Good Mary. Answer. Hi, Mary. My name's Hi. Penelope. Hi. Power P? Pen yep. Power she looks pee? up. She Power says, <laughs> she says uh, cute kid. How old is she? Daddy, can I have a snack? No. <laughs> Give me a second. I have to talk to the police officer. I want a snack! 
uh, she says, Sh- uh, uh, "Just give me it. Just give uh, no, me a second. I'll, I'll let you get back to your business. I remember when mine were, were that young. Um, what was your name? So what's going on with his wellness? Uh, he hasn't seemed uh, uh, well lately. I, I was kind of worried about him. Uh, he's he's been a little weird all summer. Uh, is, is everything all right? This is another portal. Yeah, yep. that's what's it's that's, a different it's gotta place be. at um, night. That's exactly what Vicky is thinking. She's like, it's connected to the hospital. Like he can get right. back and forth. Um, right. She says, uh, he just hasn't been into work. It's just a mandatory checkup. Um, it's nothing serious. But you said he hasn't been. You well. sure it's nothing serious? Because he is. I mean, something's wrong with that guy. Really? Uh, okay. If you could just describe what, what's been weird, I'll, I'll I take. I want a no- snack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Honey, if you don't shut her up, I'm taking you both to jail. <laughs> uh, Vicky says, Vicky says, do you mind if I come in? I can sit just, and wait. It's no problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, come in. Let me just get her something and I'll. Yeah, don't I'll, wait. I'll, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about uh, it. All right, come here, sweetie. Come here. And he, t- he walks her into the kitchen for a second. You hear some like unwrapping of something and then he, and then he comes back out. Um, and it's just like, yeah, um, he's. I don't know. He started. He started working on something. I don't know if he's like, uh, I don't know, like uh, building a car or something, or remodeling an engine, or I, I don't know. But we hear these weird kind of mechanical noises and a lot of like bangs and shimmies uh, over there. And and he a couple times I saw him. But the window where I saw you, I saw him walking by that window with this like. I mean, it's a headlamp is just not the 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 right way to. It's kind of like a like an old timey miner helmet or something, <laughs> like a big helmet with a big light on it. Just whoa, you know, he's just acting weird. So we told the kids to just kind of stay away. And uh, but uh, like I said, he doesn't bother anybody. He just is um, making a lot of racket at night, uh, and and he's gone all day. But I don't know. That's that's extremely helpful. I, I appreciate your help. I will um, I will take note of this and bring it back to uh, my peers. Hopefully everything's okay. We'll perhaps we'll come back at night. So if you see other lights in there, it might be us checking in on him, and, and hopefully he's all right. I really do appreciate your help. What was your name? Uh, my name uh, is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It was um, a pleasure to meet you. I'll let you get back to your business. All right. I need a law check from you. Really? A law? Really? Oh, mm-hmm. there it is. A law? That's interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are <laughs> health checks uh, a, a thing in the law? A wellness, wellness check? Yeah, wellness check. Wellness, wellness check. check. Wellness check. Wellness check. Yeah. Yeah. That's legit. That's legit. Uh, what is my law? Never heard of a wellness oh, check? I have a, fi- I have a 50 in law. Yeah. I thought I had zero. It doesn't a- matter what I heard of. It matters what Jesus has heard of. 32 under 50. Ooh. Okay. He says... Thanks, have a good day. And she click, cl- uh, closes the door behind you. And she thinks, why did I listen to Bobby? Why did I say wellness check? <laughs> You've never heard of a wellness check? Who's never I've heard, heard of a wellness, wellness check? That's like, that's that's like what is a wellness check? It's when the cops come to somebody, it was somebody like a neighbor calls their yeah, it's calls like, the I haven't cops. heard from my grandma yeah. in three days. It's yeah. when I her phone. Yeah, it, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think a state trooper would do that. So maybe well, it's still... Well, in either way, it's like who called it in. Right, right. If he's there... Maybe maybe Supposedly. this guy doesn't know. It's totally he's got family. Board. Maybe he's yeah. got it's family. Fine. Yeah. I rolled. I rolled okay. Um, all right. We're so dealing she heads, with cosmic horror. A wellness check is fine. It's okay. <laughs> she heads back to the house with this in mind, and she's going to tell the group about it. You come in. That let's go back to the house for a second before I go you. Upstairs. You want to go upstairs? Yeah. Um, uh, I want to snack. There, there are, again, there are books. There are pieces of machinery just random around the floor. You can tell this is like a workshop, basically. Um, and you want to go upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Roger leaves the living room to go upstairs. Neil, Bobby, you guys to me are still just standing in front of the door. I, we're, I'm, I'm checking out the machine. Yeah, I'm Bobby I'm like, would also closely? check out the machine. Yes. Yeah, to see what it does. Where if there's an on switch. Okay, um, you walk up to the machine, and as you get about three feet away from it, it makes a sound. It goes <gasps> shunk, and you hear some sort of clockwork uh, mechanism beginning to happen. We're going into initiative. 
shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Once again, I believe seven of the four of you have a 12 index or something like that, or 11. Do you, you all have 11 except Roger? Seven Zona? of the four of you. 11. <laughs> uh, yeah, Roger has an 11. I'm not there yet. Don't kill me. Roger has an 11. Bobby? Bobby's got an 11, yeah. An 11. Okay. And uh, Neil? I have 12. That's Ooh. right. <laughs> he's a doctor. He's, he's faster than everybody. Yeah, I got it. And uh, Vicky has an 11? 11, yep. As well. Okay. And uh, do, 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 apologies. And this thing makes this weird sound. Uh, it goes chick, 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 chick. And those like spiny kind of looking things that were sticking up at the top begin this process of going like chink, 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 and they start turning down toward the ground, almost as if they are going to become like legs, basically. <laughs> like they are starting to chink, 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 down. Um, and uh, Neil, you are right next to this thing. And you can, uh, yeah. I need to know what you do in the in the second that this that this happens. Uh, I think instinctively he's just going because Bobby's up there with him. I think he's just going to like grab Bobby by the arm and try to like get dis- some distance from it, just back away from it. Okay, uh, you're going to grab Bobby and back up. Yep. Uh, okay, great. Uh, you grab Bobby and back up, and that would be uh, okay. And then. Roger, you have gotten to like the base of the stairs, or I'm sorry, the stairs are right in that living room. So you're about halfway up the stairs when you hear this clear noise of this thing like starting to come to life. Oh, hey, it's your old pal, Troy LaValle, and I'm here to introduce today's sponsor. Maybe you've heard of them, Dollar Snacks. I love this company. I'm not just saying this. We've become friendly with the owner. Uh, he's a friend, of, a friend of the pod, member of the Nation. He was at the Boulder Show this year. Great guy, and he makes a great product. I, I, I'm a lot more conscious about what I put in my body these days. I'm really trying to like control uh, what goes in and and what goes out. I don't know if you can control that so much, but I'm really focusing at least on the in part. And the thing is, is I get hungry in the middle of the day when I'm sitting at my computer editing or uh, recording and I just need a snack, but I want a snack that is like loaded with protein uh, and not no sugar. I don't want that sugar high. I get that from caffeine. Well, this is it. Seven grams of protein, zero grams of sugar. You cannot go wrong with Dauntless Snacks. So make sure you check them out at dauntlesssnacks.com. I'm telling you, we have these around the office. They are clutch when we're doing like multiple recording days. Uh, I have them next to my desk because we get tired. Sometimes you just might even see me snacking on one on stream because they are the perfect midday snack. And if you're like someone who likes to work out, you're lifting weights, you need to make sure you're getting enough protein. You can't go wrong with this. And a lot of times you have to load it up with sugar to make it taste good. Not so here. They got new flavors coming out soon. Mango habanero and teriyaki. I want the first case of those when those come out. Those are coming out uh, later uh, this year. And honey barbecue is coming out soon. It might already be out, honestly. Honey barbecue. I feel like I feel like we got with some honey barbecues in the office. Anyways, lots of flavors. This is the uh, jalapeno. I've got the original here too. I I house the jalapenos and I can't believe I have one left. I have to hide them from my kids too. Uh, anyways, check out Dauntless Snacks, dauntlesssnacks.com. I like them so much, I'm gonna make up a jingle on the spot. Uh, da- Dauntless Snacks, they're the snack you like to eat. Dauntless Snacks, they are such a delicious treat. Dauntless Snacks, eat this fucking meat. Dauntless Snacks. So he'll he starts to go up the stairs and he just kind of turns to look at it and sees. Does it look? It it just looks like it's about to turn into something and start walking. Yes, it starts to just move, and I, the things from the top are starting to come down uh, to the ground. 
is this thing attached to the wall? Is that what's happening? It, or it's just like... You, not that you can see. It just okay. seems to be sitting there on its own. Okay. It's, it's spooled up, and you can't see any kind of evidence of, of like, uh, any evidence of what activated it, basically. Maybe proximity, I guess, um, is the only thing that you can point to. Roger just be like, back up, back up, back up, and he'll start backing up the stairs. You back up the stairs, you guys back up into the corner, and at that moment, the living room door opens. And Vicky steps into the room. <sighs> Vicky, you see them backing up against the far wall. <clears throat> so as you walk into the door, to your right, they're up against that far wall. To your left, you hear the sounds of this machine, like, activating. Uh, Vicky quickly analyzing the situation just starts sprinting straight for like the back door like the kitchen area I think if this is the correct layout of the house yeah yeah um, you're she right. just like takes in the situation and just starts like running towards the back expecting there to be like a fucking bomb or something uh okay did you close the, the door no she didn't even have time she like opened it and then just took it in and just started running shit Okay, so the door is open, and this thing goes ching, 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 and these legs come down to the ground and go, and, like, slam into the wood, and then this thing, like, rises up off the ground, and it starts to spider walk over toward Neil and Bobby, and it just hits the front door, and the front door, like, closes, and it is closing on you two. What do you do? Um, Neil. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna like try to again like pull Bobby and get out of the door before it's shut. I'm gonna try to like wedge my foot in there or something to try to keep it open as we try to get out of there. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do that. The door's already closed. So it's already closed. Oh, it is closed. Then. Yeah. So you 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 have a path toward the kitchen uh, where Vicky ran, and there's a back door, obviously. But yeah, then I'm gonna run. Toward, try to get towards the back door. Okay, so you went up toward Vicky and into the kitchen. Bobby, what do you do? Yeah, this Bobby. thing is about four feet away from you, Bobby. and it seems <laughs> intent to harm or something. It's okay, moving Bobby, toward you. Bobby pulls his gun as he's moving with uh, with Murnau, uh heading for the back door, but his, okay. his gun is out. You guys pour into the kitchen. Roger. Uh, all right, so Roger hears more commotion going on. And you see it cross in front of the stairs and start to go <laughs> past the stairs toward that other side of the room. Jesus. Fuck, I've got a gun. Ah. Uh, all right, so Roger is going to, uh, from that vantage point, uh, pull out his gun and take a shot at it. Kill. <laughs> Kill yeah. it. I mean, you got to. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't want to leave them down there. I don't think me going down there to wrestle with it is the right idea. <laughs> so I'm going to fucking shoot it. <laughs> okay. It's all Gun Roger knows how to do. in the neighborhood in the Gun middle of the day. Gunshots in the fucking neighborhood <laughs> I mean, in Medford, Massachusetts. Can I have a silencer <laughs> on my gun? a handgun or whatever? What, what, uh, is it ranged? What's, what is it? It's, uh, it's what uh, is it? Melee, or no, not melee. It's firearms. Firearms, yes. Firearms. That's yeah. it. I mean, do, can I say I have a silencer on my gun? <laughs> do you? I don't know. There's so <laughs> many guns. Surely I one know. of them has a silencer. On it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, just feel like if I'm being stealthy, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't just fire this gun off in the middle of the day. So you tell me. If I don't have a silencer, I won't shoot. Because um, uh, that would be dumb. Yeah, I would say you don't have a silencer if you didn't tell me you had one ahead of time. Yeah, I'm looking at my sheet here and I don't see it. But, uh, oh, fuck me. <laughs> uh, all that oil. <laughs> uh, is it big, this thing? Big? Yeah, it's pretty big. It's it's about the size of a, of a man. Yeah, maybe not quite as tall, but I mean, it has that kind of girth. It's like it's bulky. This is some kind of security system. This is, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, 
you where's can just, Vicky? Can I you see can just, Vicky? I'm in the kitchen. No, I ran they're right. Straight. They're right below you in, in the we, kitchen, basically. Can we roll like a, an alertness thing to see if there's any other like since well, the hold, hold, hold on, okay, a second, sorry. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah. just. Roger has to do what he does in this moment. <laughs> that right, this thing right, is right. down the on the I'm floor, clearly <laughs> hunting someone, not you, and moves past the stairs. What do you I'm, do in that? I'm moment? gonna just run upstairs and and go right into the first room that I see. Okay, you run upstairs and go into the first room that you see. And when you do, Guns you out. immediately see another machine. Oh, now, shit. this machine looks very different. It is kind of like long and thin, and it has uh, these it has these pots, these small pots that are kind of coming out that are um, off coming off the side at the end of it, and sticking out of the pots are uh, um, sticking out of the pots are quills that are touched by <laughs> mechanical hands. So it's like mechanical uh, pincers that are holding these quills, and they're sitting in these ink pots, basically. What and the this fuck? thing is sitting on a desk, and there are papers everywhere with writing oh, all God. over it. Oh, shit. So that's what you yeah. see in an instant. And then we go back to Vicky. Bobby and Neil have poured into the kitchen with you. What do you do? <laughs> Vicky has this also. This thing yeah, is, is coming. Yeah, Vicky has also, like, pulled out her gun, but then also is like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Shoot a right. fucking robot? Like right. she's just like, what? So then she looks and she sees the window that she had like leaned against in the curtain and she rips down the curtain. That's in the other room. Fuck. That's in the living room. You're in the kitchen. <laughs> there's no curtains in the kitchen? There is, there's a curtain, yeah. She rips down the curtain and- a Strength check. It's a curtain. <laughs> it's really well-made curtain. It's a strong curtain. God yeah. damn it. Okay. Uh, what's my strength? An 11. Oh, God. So, so 55. You got to okay, get under so 55. 35. Ooh. So nice. you, and you tear it away. Yeah. And she's... With your gun in your hand. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't have her finger <laughs> on the trigger. She knows how to use a gun, but she just like pulls it off. And she, with a gun in your hand, do you see that? Why do why don't people ever care about doing like actual reality? <laughs> you have a gun in your hand. You can't then grab a curtain with two hands and rip it down. She rips it on mean, one hand. It's arguable you could if the if the gun was okay, on safety. That's just, that's just not what you were safety. doing. That's not what you <laughs> described. If I'm hold on. If I'm holding a gun, Take, grab the gun you have there. Yeah. I could grab a cur. I have other fingers. Yeah, yeah. The, the gun's on safety. We're assuming because yeah. she has. A, she's not prepared to fight. We've all it's been here. A, okay, a so with, with one I hand, could, like, you rip this curtain down, and and what do you do with it in your one hand? She's gonna. She's using two hands. She's going to. <laughs> she puts a gun in her mouth. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Let me just hold this up. She's a fucking cop. Oh, she knows. She puts the barrel of the gun in her mouth just to hold it she while she does this thing with the curtain. How to use her hands while holding a gun. She's a cop. Anyway, this is what I want to do one handed or two handed. She takes this curtain, she wants to throw it onto the moving robot in the hopes that it like, you know, gets like tripped up or something and its little legs like get stuck or whatever. So that's her okay. plan, like a net. So she is going to throw this fabric. Uh, All right, so the gun in your hand is gonna be a minus 20% penalty. So go I, on accuracy. You, I holster my gun. Okay, so, all right. Holster it and then throw it. How about that? Dex, let's do dexterity. You're such a jerk. It's <laughs> <laughs> a 55% chance. Oh, I hope you're so happy. <laughs> it's a 97 over 55. Uh, 97? Uh, so yeah, you throw this curtain and it just like hits the doorway of the kitchen into the dining room and it just sort of like doesn't even get near uh, the thing. It just crumples so up on the floor. Embarrassing. Uh, and it's, it's its turn. Cool. Oh, oh shit. It turns and it leaps from the living room in through the dining room, basically to the doorway of the kitchen in one leap. And it's just like, Scoosh! and the bottom part, the bottom trim of the doorway between the kitchen and the dining room, just the wood shatters as this thing hits it. And it just slinks out with this telescopic, uh, like, um, 
just this this hunk of metal is all you see just comes out of it at you vicky uh to try to on? stab you with this oh, thing and Jesus. it's uh, holy crap it's it's legit <laughs> and oh, i rolled a 98 <laughs> and oh. it just it goes shung and just like comes right up to your nose <laughs> and then and then goes backwards and it didn't it just didn't reach you you were wow. just out of its reach Jesus. and this thing shit. seems it seems seem that seemed like it would kill you like that's how dangerous this oh seems. Like God. if that hit you in the face, it seems like it would go through it like a sword would just go right through your face. And it is Neil's turn. <laughs> Roger, oh, you hear Vicky scream. She <laughs> screams from downstairs. So where we were trying to run out through the back. So yeah, you're right by the back door now. Okay, okay. but it's closed. Uh, it's closed. It's, but it's broken. But it's broken. Okay, so All it's right. easily to, easy to just open. Yeah, just like rip it open, and as I said, as I said Maybelline, come on, makeshift. Yeah, and I try to like hold the door open and get out of the house. Okay, so Neil gets back out onto the stoop, and we just see birds chirping and an old woman in the backyard just knitting. Still hasn't looked up, <laughs> and it is Bobby's turn. <laughs> Shit, Bobby. Heads for the back door. Can he grab Pushes Maybelline? Pushes Vicky toward the lion and then runs out the back door. <laughs> yes, basically. Oh, oh, oh. That would give it's you more time. Uh, no, her. She's the no, one no, you no. want. She's, <laughs> he's gonna. I mean, he's not. He's not heartless. He's gonna like head for the door and see if he can grab her and pull her along with him. Okay, he grabs Vicky mm -hmm. and pulls her along with him. I'll allow it. I'll yeah. allow it. You guys are all friends. Yeah. And you go Try barreling out the back door, and we just see you like stumbling down the stoop steps into the uh, into the lawn, and uh, you just see behind you, boom, the door close. Oh shit. Roger, it's your turn. You heard Vicky scream. You you heard this thing leap, and it sounded like it was almost breaking wood directly underneath you, and you are in a room that is uh, filled with uh, that is filled with these papers, as I mentioned, um, all kinds of writing and stuff all over the place, and this machine up in the middle of it. Do I hear the door slam? Uh, yes, yes. You, you you can hear that they exited the house. Okay. Uh, oh God, I want to read these papers, um, <laughs> but I'm in a I'm in a bad way. Uh, I have to I have to look down at the papers. Okay. Um, you look down, and you uh oh man. This is so fucking great. <laughs> you hear <laughs> downstairs, and let's we'll go uh, out of combat for the moment. You guys are in the backyard, <sighs> breathing. Roger, you just hear <laughs> like this. Like you can hear the clockwork machinery, but it doesn't sound so violent or fast. It almost sounds like it's like patrolling in a way. Oh, and then that it just seems, word. and then it just the sound just stops. All right, so. And then you look down, and uh, there's these papers all over. You see um, versions. One of the first things that you see are versions of a birthday party invitation for Richard Zaloni. Oh, that are oh. that are have spilled ink, are incorrect, are misspelled, oh. are written in weird ways. What? Uh, I can't believe you're in this room. This is insane. <laughs> and are uh, obviously failed attempts to create the thing that you uh, got in the mail. Um, at the bottom of this pile, you keep sifting through, and you see a single sheet of paper with these like these machine like ink notes and you see it has you know Roger Comstone written in this weird like mechanical almost robot hand with your home address <laughs> and then you see Vicky Ricci and an address and you see Dr. Neil Bachman and an address and 
Bobby, Robert, whatever your last name is. Walford. Blanking on it. Walford. <laughs> yeah. And you see that it was sent overseas to an address in Syria. Oh, man. <laughs> All of this is, is on this, like, note paper at the bottom. Uh, go ahead and give me a sanity roll. <laughs> oh, shit. I uh, made it 45 under 60-something. Nice. Okay. You don't take any uh, any sanity damage. But, yeah, this is uh, sort of a messed up situation. Takes the papers with everyone's address on them, shoves it into his bomber. And there's more papers around. Like, there's yeah. crumpled papers all over the place. I'm not sure how much time you're taking in here. I know. He's, he's going to back out of there, look down the stairs, and then slide into the next room. Gun still out. Okay. Slide into the next room. Gun still out. And this seems to be probably a master bedroom, like a like the the uh, Doctor Barbus's bedroom. You would assume uh, king size bed, and uh, um, porn by the door. Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I got this wrong once again. Furniture. Uh, there is no bed. Sorry, furniture has been removed, but you can tell that there was once a bed in here because there's a headboard that l- like leans up against the wall, but there's no mattress uh, attached to it anymore. And uh, you see uh, a dresser that is turned over, like fallen on its side, uh, and all beat up and broken. And as you look around, you see that the wood floor is all chipped and broken with these half moon. Uh, marks in the floor like um, like the edge of a metal file you know like a metal file like that little kind of moon at the bottom of yeah, it one of these used... machines was probably walking around yeah yeah oh jeez exactly and uh, and that's all that I see in this room there's no other uh, door and there is and there is one piece of furniture over to the side there is a futon over uh, on the side of the room okay but no machines any closets no, no machines uh, in this room um but there is uh, there is something that stands out out in this room. There is a a small hibachi grill in the room, <laughs> and there's still no sound from downstairs. Let's see what's happening outside. You three, Roger's still in there. <clears throat> You're not hearing any crashing or breaking of anything. You're not hearing uh, gunshots being rattled off. Uh, it seems sort of still. Uh, the size still in there. Uh, oh, I, fi- don't worry. I know what to do. I start calling the police. It's, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> police, fire department, have them come over here and help us with this robot. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Bobby I love slaps that idea. the hand out of her now. <laughs> so slaps the, the phone out of her now. I love that idea, though. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Call the fire department. They'll come fix it. Um, uh, Vicky is like so shocked. That, that was so scary. The fucking needle came this Jesus close God. to her fucking face. Um, and she yeah, says, I wouldn't call it a needle. I'd call it like it was a blade. Like a, it was big. Oh Jesus. Um, she says, leave him. And she just starts oh. heading towards the front of the house. <gasps> Ice cold. Yes. All right. Wow. I'm not going to forget that. And then she says, <laughs> as a follow up, he can handle himself. Nice save. <sighs> uh, <laughs> I mean. Nice save. I don't think Bobby leaves right away. He's got to. He's got to wait to see what happens. If they, like the machine's not chasing, right? You don't hear any sounds inside the house. No, the, it is not pursuing you outside. Okay. All right. And it was noisy. Like when it was when it was moving, it was pretty noisy, right? Like, Very we, noisy. Yeah. Can we can we climb anywhere outside the house? Like climb up to where to a, to at least look into a window to see if if Masai is in there or where Masai is in there. There are no trees in the yard. You look over the fence and you see a shed uh, of a pretty hefty size just over the back fence that belongs to the old woman, almost certainly, that's sitting on that back patio back there. That shed, if you were to climb onto that roof, would be uh, an amazing vantage point to look into the rear of the house and even in the upper windows from there. Yeah, uh, Bobby, Bobby climbs up on that shed. He's the woman is sitting right there. Okay. <laughs> Miss, excuse me, miss, miss, sorry. Like from over the fence? From over oh. the fence, yeah, miss, sorry, hi, state, state <laughs> police you? here, oh. state police here. I'm just doing a check on this gentleman's home here. I just need to climb on top of your uh, your, your shed right so here. So you went around the block 
to her house. It's a fence and knocked right? on the front door. No, no, or, it's a fence. Sorry, it's like a fence you can't see through. You can oh. see, like see over it if you were like back farther away, but uh, so like are I you gonna to climb to... and jump over the fence? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Her? I mean, if 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 I can't, I can't just. I mean, she. I thought she could see us. I thought we could see her, and I could just say, "Hey." You could see her from the stoop. If you climbed over the fence and climbed onto the oh. shed, she could see you, and you could see her. But, but when you, yeah. we're on the ground, we can't see her. Right. Okay. Okay. It's it's like a six foot high fence. So you know, and so you if you went on your toes and looked, you could probably see her by her house. Uh huh. But you know, if she walked all the way up to you, you wouldn't be able to see her. All right. Fuck it. So it's are you too just calling from there and just no, putting it's up too your badge? And being it's like, too complicated. I thought she was just like. You know, directly like over like a see-through fence, and I could just say, "Hey, Miss, we're gonna climb yeah, the on fence this. isn't see-through." All right, all right. Uh, so scratch that. Uh, I mean, if we can't get up top there, I mean, Bobby's just gotta wait to see if he comes out, right? We can't. We're just well, not gonna Vic, leave him. Vicky left. Vicky, Vicky ran Vicky around. Can go. Ran, Vicky, Vicky ran around to the front. Right. She, she went around the yeah. to front she left leave. the backyard. Are you staying in the backyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm staying in the backyard. Neil, what are you doing? I don't want to leave. Yeah, I'm not sure what Vicky's intentions are here. I, I mean, obviously something has changed between her and Roger. All right. There's 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 some uh, new tension there. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. I think he's he is torn. Like he doesn't know what to do. Just, I don't know. I'm torn too. I don't want yeah. to go in there. I don't want to see the robot. I mean, it's not moving now. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait for, for Roger. Yeah. See All if right. He so needs the two of you stand like, in the backyard. Yeah. Vicky, you are alone up front. What are your intentions, Vicky? Everyone wants to know. <laughs> She's um, she was so scared and so mad in that moment. Like it's she has one of those reactions where when you get afraid, you get angry. It's just like that natural thing. That's like her predisposition. And she was so scared for her own life. And then the anger about Roger just like flooded back in. And she just was so immediately just focused on her anger at him that she said that out of anger. And by the time she had like run around to the front and caught her breath for a second, she didn't mean it. Um, she doesn't want to leave Roger to f die. Um, so she is like reluctantly, but like she knows it's the right thing. It's also she's like an agent and this is her job. She goes back up to the front porch and opens the front door back up and just yells, <laughs> Cobstone! And uh, she wants to get the, ro the robot's attention to try to get it away oh, my from the back. Oh, oh my God. All right, so at this point, the neighbor opens his door and is just like, is everything all right? Oh shit. Which As neighbor? As you're screaming He's into the dead. house. We hey, gotta Zeus. kill him. We gotta kill him and his kid now. Hey, 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 Zeus. Zeus. Both. Yes, hey Zeus. Okay. She is says, everything okay? Close your door, get inside. Oh God, oh God. And he yeah. closes his door oh, and immediately picks up the phone. Oh back Jesus. Back to Vicky. All right. Don't pick up the phone. I'm a cop. <laughs> you scream into the house. Oh, God. Uh, Cobb, oh, Jesus Christ. And you can see through the living room, through the dining room, into the kitchen, this thing that had been, that was like in the dining room and kind of like uh, still, like turns to life and slap, 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 just like flies toward you in the front door. And she plans on closing the front door. It was just like a distraction. And she yells to Roger. She says, go out the back. And she closes the door again. Okay, you boom, you close the door and it, bam, it stops right there in the front door. And comes to rest right in front of the bottom of the steps. The only way Roger could get out of the house. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't have done There's that. There's actually several other ways out okay, of that. Yeah, okay. But now the back door, the only way to the back door is to go directly by the robot within like a foot of it. So um, you have to go down the steps and then around back behind okay, you. Okay, wait, then I get... wouldn't have done that because my plan was to make a distraction for it. So I wouldn't, if I had seen the interior of the late. house. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Roger, figure right. it out. Um, let's go back to it. Roger. In this uh, in this bedroom, so I heard that and then pop, 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 and something stop very close to me. So I know, like, not very close to you, but downstairs yeah. again. Yeah. Right, no way, no way out down that way. Hmm. So you're just Roger. You're putting together with your sort of military, uh, you know, insertion, sort of like sentry. Uh, skills or whatever. You know, the, the, this thing is clearly protecting uh, the house, and it 
for some reason, s- seems to not know that you're there. You have good reason to think that the marks that you saw on the floor were made by this thing, which means it can get upstairs yeah. and has been upstairs. And right now, it seems that you have the 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 jump on it because it is not moving up the steps. But as soon as anyone is within that first floor, uh, it is it is activating. Okay. Um, what's with this hibachi? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You go over to the hibachi and you see that it is filled with burnt scraps of paper. Mm. Yeah, I know it wasn't food. Uh, you want to go ahead and uh, anything roll legible? A search. Roll a search. Yeah. No, it's not going to do well. Yeah, forty-eight over something. Yeah, you see that there is writing on these papers, and nothing that you see is is legible. Uh, you catch random letters here and so there, weird. nothing connecting. It's so everything is so alien. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the, you, that's not how you burn paper. Just fucking light a fire. Like why do they? <laughs> yeah. It's why like they, they, whoever's why doing these things. There is a a disconnect between like how we normally do things in this world. You know what I mean? Like instead of for, you don't have this fucking weird machine forging invitations. Instead of just like lighting papers on fire, it, the, the, whoever is doing this doesn't understand how our world works. So maybe it's these robots, or maybe it's something else. Is there another? Uh, it's kind of making me think. Roll of, your roll your alertness. Uh, oh, that's a close one. Seventy six under eighty two. Right next to the hibachi, uh, you you get down as you get down to look at everything. You notice out of the corner of your eye that there seems to be some sort of uh, deliberate paint on the floor underneath the the futon. And it seems to be coming out from the futon, and there's more paint underneath it, like uh, like an intentional painted, you know, symbol or sign or something. Okay, I will, I will adjust quietly adjust the futon to see what to see the yellow sign. Roll a stealth check. Uh, Thirty nine under seventy. Roger lifts the futon, half of it, eases it over and gently sets it down, revealing a seal that has been painted underneath this futon, a circular seal with a symbol inside of it. It's about three feet wide, three feet in diameter, this seal. So it's like pretty large, and it has all the earmarkings of what you have seen. Roll in a cult. Roll in a cult. Like what you guys saw on on the paper that he, it's not the same one. But it, it has like similar sort of occult vibes. Uh, fifty-seven under two, twenty. Uh, fifty-seven over twenty-two. So it failed. All right. Yeah. So you would recognize it as another symbol that's probably related to demonology because of how much you've been studying so far. But you don't know who who this is. Some sort of cult. Um, any other rooms up here? Uh, there is a uh, or cl- no or closets. Um. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just want to double check my map here because it is confusing. Um, yes, there there are there are closets. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yes. Okay. Oh. So that that is it. Uh, if you see, there's <laughs> that's the symbol that you're seeing under the door, and it's laid up against the house. That that is the house, okay. and uh, it is. You can tell, like it's similar. If you look at it up against the. Uh, the other seal that you found, which was on the proof of whatever, the proof of handwriting document, the yeah. uh, request exemplar, uh, it has a very similar thing. And also it has these these letterings, uh, these these letters around it. What are the um, letters? The letters are M-A-R-B-A-S, uh, whereas the other one was P-U-R-S-O-N. This one is M-A-R-B-A-S, but that just doesn't really uh, mean anything to to Roger. Yeah. Um, But I'm sorry. Sorry. Back to you were you were asking about um, closet, a a, a closet. Yes, there are there are closets. Um, 
Right now, you're in with this seal, and you're standing right kind of on top of this seal. And, uh, you, the closet door is closed, and you get the sense that a mirror once hung on this door, and that mirror is broken. So you can see, like, shards of a mirror at the, on, like, the floor in front of this door, and it probably was on the door and then, and then fell. Left hand open the closet door, right hand still uh, on the gun. You reach out and touch the doorknob <laughs> of the closet. <laughs> oh, no. You pull open the door, and you see a long, narrow closet, which goes back, like, six or seven feet from the door. It's kind of of deep. Yeah, it's a walk-in. And uh, there are piles on the ground of just clothes, like old clothes, and that smell is coming through here as well of oil, gasoline, just kind of like rags of like dirty clothes of somebody that's constantly working with machines or covered in oil, right? Like that's sort of the vibe that it gives off. And you see that there are a couple boxes as well that are empty, empty boxes, like cardboard boxes. Um, But the thing that catches your attention is on the far wall. (laughs) On the far wall of the closet, down almost all the way to the floor. Think of it like, think of it like a uh, like a cat door or something, or a dog door in a doorway. This is not a doorway; it's just the wall. But all the way down at the bottom of it, the drywall has been pulled away, and there is exposed uh, like cinder block that is like the building blocks of the house. Within that cinder block are five small iron bars like a little like gutter or cell thing like uh but it's mm-hmm. only about a foot high and a foot and a half wide yeah and then just past those bars is a small red door <laughs> Jesus. that seems to have a hinge on top <laughs> as if it like flaps open, you know, like this. Like a dog door? Like a, like, yes, actually, it's like a dog door. On the other side of a On the other side of these bars bars. that are small enough that you could probably put your hand through, but like, not much else. You should try to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. See what happens. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, (laughs) I think I know what's happening, by the way. Or I think I have an idea part of what's happening, yeah. What? No. Because I fucking don't. I, yeah, I'm clueless right now. <laughs> We're here from battling robots. Well, that's what I think that there is. There's some connection here has been made with this alternate dimension with the books we were reading about with the all and they're utilizing this other dimensions, the Carcosa's steampunk type technology to build these things. I but think what that's is, where they're, they're, like these robots but, are coming but from. But why? Yeah, why? Why? And why is it writing letters to us? And yeah. Why is it so bad at writing letters? I don't know. And why stash? Why, sorry, why is it bad at writing letters? <laughs> yeah, why yeah, is it handwriting? Of, it had a bunch of fucked up ones that it was bad at. Okay. 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 Not to sound defensive on behalf of the unnamed robot, but how about you build a robot that writes in cursive with ink and quill and just crushes it on the first try? As soon as you do that, I'll I'll withdraw my defensive uh, response. I simply wouldn't put myself out there knowing that I cannot make a competent robot. I wouldn't even try. And now that's the spirit. Yeah. I don't want to look. Don't even foolish try. in front of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Dare to dream. Dare to dream that a robot can write with good handwriting. Yeah, I don't feel safe sticking my hand through those bars to look in that door. What I'd want to do is kick through the drive wall and have more space to open up that door, but I don't want to do it and alert this uh, robot. So it's going to file that away. There's no more space to open up the door. The, the door itself is that small. It is like so a I can stick my hand through and open it and look inside. No, it's to... it's sort of like a flap door that pushes away from you. Like, like if you put if you stuck like a uh, 
you know, like a, a I don't know, something long and oh, slim. I'll do is like I'll look in the closet for like a yardstick or something. Or like a hanger. Yeah. 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 Or anything. Or and, uh, John Cusack like and broom, shove him through handle. and then he'll wake up in John Malkovich. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly what I, what I was thinking. What, what I want to make sure I do is not put myself in a position that as I'm opening the door, my hand passes through the bars. I'd like to keep my hand on the other side of the bar. So I'm looking for something long enough in the closet. I could That's show. fine. I th a hanger, I think, would even do the job. Okay, so I'm down there. In a so you take a wire hanger, bend it a little bit, and right. it just like, and you get the length that you need. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. Let's roll for initiative. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. No roll for initiative. I was just very excited. Um... We're having we're having a really fun time. Uh, you push that hanger through, and it makes contact with this red little red door, and you push it open. Roll an alertness roll. Oh, geez. pick the right guy for that. Yeah. Oh. That's that is true. The skin of my penis, uh, <laughs> seventy-five <laughs> under eighty-two. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> you barely. weren't kidding about that penis. <laughs> Got circumcised by that roll. <laughs> <laughs> you push the door, and you immediately see something on the other side. No shit. That is completely impossible. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's good. He's leaving the call. <laughs> you see it. He knows it's going to be terrifying. Skin is just slowly <laughs> crawling out of his chair. <laughs> no. No. I don't no. know. No. Call the fire department. <laughs> I'm calling the police. Call the <laughs> Roger, I, I imagine the end of the hangar like shaking as it's like being put through, and it touches the red door, pushes it open, and you look through, and it opens into like a wider area that you know that this closet just architecturally is butted right up against the uh, exterior the, uh, wall. Exterior I think it's, wall. Yeah, either the exterior wall or another room or something like that. Then you know that. And uh, so this is impossible. You push it open and you see similar to the night floors where like you opened it and there was a space that wasn't there before. Like you're expecting this kind of thing now. You open it up and you see what looks like um, books like a ton of books that are all on, on shelves. It's almost like you're peeking into like a library or like a bookstore or something like that. And you, you peer through and with your alertness, you actually hear things. You hear like the sounds of creaking wood uh, as like someone's like kind of walking around and you hear like, um, like muffled voices uh, speaking and and you hear but with that alertness you hear in the distance this, this kind of muffled uh, well first you kind of hear very clearly somebody go like just a moment and you you hear footsteps walking away from you and then muffled almost as if like it's it's much further away than where uh -huh. that first voice first started you hear how can I help you, sir? And you hear a voice say, Yeah, how you doing? Uh, my name is Tom Wright. Uh, I'm a detective with the Nassau County Police Department. I'm uh, working a missing persons case. And you hear this conversation. Some of it you can pick up, some of it you can't. But it sounds you heard the name Tom Wright. I'm working a missing persons case. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then you just hear uh, this this guy says, "Why, yes, I believe she did, sir." Okay, good. Um, uh, can I ask you a few questions? And uh, you're hearing this conversation between what sounds like a cop and this guy, it's and a guy uh, named Jim. This guy <laughs> named Jim, and yeah. And after a few seconds, you hear, "Not at all, sir." What is it? what is your name? It's Jim, sir. Uh and you hear a bell ring as this guy like walks out and as a, the bell rings you roger hear the unmistakable familiar sounds that you know of car horns and sirens of like new york city 
and then it just like shoop, it closes, and then you just like kind of like business as usual again. You hear the man kind of like you hear footsteps coming back toward the door, and now just yeah. a question: When uh, I look at just in there, a question, can you roll a sanity check? <laughs> does it look like? A, yeah, all right. Does, <laughs> I just want to. I'm just trying to picture: Is it a tiny little like room, or is it like Alice in Wonderland? Like I'm like is it, I'm looking at no, a miniature it's a, room. No, it's a full size room. It looks like you are. But like, if I can peeking, only see this much, am I just seeing like the bottoms of shelves? Yes, and, like it's almost like you're looking through a like a like ventilation a duct or something into yeah. a huge space. A regular size see. space, the size, okay. you know, size of a. Yeah. But I'm seeing it at floor level, so I don't really fucking. Right, I can't so you're seeing it. all these like books, uh, you, you know, it's and you see wood floors, and stuff like that. But yeah, you can't make out anything else. Sixty-five over sixty-two. Oh no! Oh. I can't just like inches, inches. Sixty-five over sixty-two. So yeah, this is um, obviously purely, uh, purely unnatural and and just just awfulness. Uh, that is two points of sanity damage. Oof. Would you like to take them? I'm gonna take them. Okay. <sighs> so yes, y- y- it, this bring. I, tell me what you're thinking Wait, after you after. Well, I can't remember what this guy is. I, I just remember him from the flashback. But Jim what was his Jim connection? Was the guy who ran the library program. Yes. No and way. But I don't know him. I don't know him. I never No, no, no. Saw Roger him. doesn't know that this no. is more of a shock to you as players and to the audience. Yeah. yeah. That, like, we saw this. Uh, for those that don't remember, what Roger is hearing from the back of the room is an epilogue scene from season four. Yeah. It's a oh. post credit scene from season four. And uh, this seems to be the location where... Um, where Abigail Wright got the King in Yellow, the mm-hmm. copy of the King in Yellow, because Neil found out from the art dealer that she, uh, the whatever the art, the gallery owner, um, that she said she found this book in a Lower East Side bookshop, and uh, it was giving her all these this new inspiration for all these ideas for her paintings, um, and. Yeah, I can't remember if you guys ever investigated that. I know you didn't as part of the show. I can't remember if you did it like later or anything like that, but... Yeah, so um, Roger doesn't know any of the connections. He just knows that like that sounds like a portal to New York and yeah. maybe a portal to the and past. You heard, and you heard the name Tom Wright, and you remember her yeah. father's name is uh, Thomas Wright. Right. Oh, God. And he was a cop? Her father was yeah. a cop? Oh, that was the guy that I wanted. That was to, right. Yeah, so I would know right. right because I was the one that wanted to find out about yep. the dad. Yeah. Yep. You were the one that went to try to dig and find out right. information. I thought Roger was stupid. <laughs> 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 you weren't stupid. You just rolled terribly yeah. with uh, Detective Guradanda, and then you yeah. were just oh, like, yeah. when you rolled you terribly, you said. Yeah, I was like, you hurry up with that. Yeah, would you hurry up already? Just antagonized him to the yeah, because he's got such bad charisma. He just he failed on the roll. All right, so oh my lord. <laughs> so yeah, this is a nut. So I imagine you're also flashing to the night floors, and not just partially the name Tom Wright, but partially like this is a, a gateway to another place, just like the night floors was. And but the, I can't walk through there. No, you cannot. I couldn't you like cannot. squeeze my body. Maybe a hand. No, but you think and you think, you know what? There were, like, by that machine in the other room, there were some little red books that uh, were, like, kind of piled up around there. And you think, like, oh, this could be, like, you know, is he passing books through (laughs) into this bookstore, you know? Wow. Yeah, it makes the, me... From the size, you can see, like, things could be passed through mail, books, that kind of stuff. It's like a mail door, basically. Did we meet in Dallin's office? Did we have ever go into Dallin's office? Did he have a closet? No. Yeah. A, a, a shell, like something on the door, wall no, covering... No, his like, door could be we, the portal. They oh, passed we, through his door, and right. they we've never. We've been in his office, right? Yeah, we've been in his office, but we've during the day. But during the day, yeah. What's well, the day now? <laughs> it's I'm all fucked there's, like, yeah, there's probably like a fucking <gasps> file cabinet or something. You move, and it has this thing. That's why. That's where he's going. But like, 
Yeah, there's something else. Okay, so Roger, he's not smart, but he's starting to he's starting to piece a couple things together. It's it's, uh, but now he's got to get out of this fucking house, yeah. and he thinks like not only is he going to get a guy out of this house, they need to stake this place out until nighttime because here, yes, there's dangerous robots, but ultimately, Barbus is going to come back alone with his little mining helmet tonight at some point or just fucking appear out of thin air and they can confront him because if shit goes awry and they got to get rid of Barbus, that's one thing doing that in the hospital is, is another like point of no return um, but the robot's going to be a problem <laughs> yeah uh, and he also wants to relay this information to to Neil and, and, and the others so, because they're smart and they can probably figure things out that Roger just doesn't have that type of training for um, so there's a window that looks out into the backyard here yes okay and if I searched all the that's there's no other rooms right or there was there one yeah room? I think that you've done a good job of searching um, I don't want to like hog yeah. the episode by just searching the yeah, entire upstairs. Yeah, yeah, no, so. I, I understand. I understand. No, you're, uh, you're but I also good. don't want to be like, I'm just going to leave even though there's two other rooms to check. Right. Cause you know, I mean, it sucks, but this is, this is the way that it worked out. You know, you guys sort of, yeah, the way that it played out. Yeah. 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 But there's nothing else up here. There's nothing else up here of, of substance besides those those little red books that are in Grab next to that books. machine. Grab the books. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I'm, I'm worried about triggering this other machine, too. <laughs> like, maybe the uh, that one is a defense one, and this one is just a writer, but there's no reason <laughs> yeah. to think that they all don't have defense capabilities. So Roger doesn't want to fuck with that. Roger's going to go over to the window and see if there's a way he can lower himself down. Yeah, uh, yeah. W I would want an athletics check to not just like happen to get hurt, but um, uh, yeah, you can open the door, open the window, and climb out. He's gonna like hang, just yeah. try to drop without hurting his leg. Uh, oh, Fifty-two under sixty-one. Nice. He he hits the ground, rolls, and pops right up. No worse for the wear. Fuck. And there's Bobby and yeah. Neil. We're, we're we're like Jesus Messiah. We were waiting for you. Um, he just happened? tells him everything. <laughs> yeah, <they're> like, yeah, <laughs> what what the fuck happened? Fills him in on everything that he found up there, including this extra dimensional space, and along with the idea that like we should we should stake out until nightfall and raid. Agreed. Uh, when you guys come around the front, Vicky is. Uh, she has the mail on the hood of the car and she's just has started to like go through and make piles of different things of things of note or interest um, and when you walk up she says the neighbors heard us um, they could be calling the police we should leave for now oh, shit. we are the police oh no shit if the We're not. police if the yeah, actual we, police come and they go into this here. house with a fucking killer robot in yeah. it do you oh. think our cover would hold up Fuck, it won't. It won't. This guy's, I mean, he, yeah, he said himself it's not It's not legit, or it's not going to last. Oh, well, fuck. maybe not with state well, police, two but things. if the local cops show up, it might. It's a big risk. I mean, you're right, though. We can't, if we leave and the cops go in there, they're going to get fucked up by the, the, by the machine, right? Yeah. So we got to keep them up. Yeah. And, and if they don't, if one of them gets away, then they're going to like alert. So we can't do that. We've got to take out this fucking machine. Um, how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, and, I, I, I would also say law enforcement wise, particularly you, Vicky, would know that um, it's well, I mean, not I was just going to say it's it's probably not likely that police called in in this situation would forcibly enter the house that's fair and oh, also you know, like, like they're not you guys okay yeah, yeah. and also <laughs> no you make a good point like if hey but if they see like there's signs of forced entry like yeah. the broken door in the back well, I, I mean think, yeah. They, yeah that is true yeah. well, here's here's in. how we could play it you could also I, try talking to jesus yeah, yeah we could go talk to jesus <laughs> or if he's already called the police like uh francis said it's probably the local you know, police department that would come on a call, just a random call from 911. And if we say, hey, this is, you know, state police business, like, 
it, it, then it's like a jurisdiction thing. Then we can just say this is state police business. We're investigating something. Right. Like he's one of ours. Take we, over. Yeah. 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 But I think we should go. Well, talk you better to, act quickly. Yeah. I'm going to go talk to Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you go talk to Jesus. Is Please everything all right? Make peace with Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I kept my daughter in the basement for now. Talk to me. That's really funny. What's going on? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, we had a bit of a scare. There's um, an animal in the, the house uh, that we were unaware of, and we thought it could be rabbit. I just didn't want your daughter to um, come outside or anything. It's oh, okay. God. Oh, God. It's all right. We contacted- What kind of animal? A dog? No, it looks to be maybe um, like a koi Wild dog boar. or something. It's um, it, it's wild, but it it must have made a nest in the house. Maybe that's what's going on with him. There was a smell. Man, um, that guy is crazy, man. He is crazy. I'm telling you. Yeah, I just didn't want you to be concerned. You, you're right. fine. Your daughter's okay. Just don't. I would say, do not go near that house. We're, we're actively investigating it now. All we, right, but it's taken care of. It's taken uh, care we of. We don't have anything to worry about. No, 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 no. It's all, all right, taken care all right. of. And you're okay. Your people are okay. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> no, nobody got. I did yell. I screamed. I it scared me. I was. Uh, you yeah, screamed so. Ex- like so loudly, like extremely <laughs> loudly. I know. And I, I was used... really concerned for you, your safety and the safety of your team. Uh, yeah. No. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You Thank seem you. genuinely terrified. <laughs> are you part of the force? Uh, no, no. I just, uh, I just, I just, I appreciate what you guys do, and I don't want anybody to get hurt. That's all. Oh, well, we appreciate you. No, no, no. Everything's okay. Um, I shouldn't have yelled. It honestly caught me so off guard. I didn't expect to see an animal in this house. Um, but okay. animal control is taking care of it. So no need to worry, Jesus. Just wanted to let you know. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Detective Isotope out. <laughs> I walk. <laughs> I Do we know if he actually he called closes the, the door. He's like, that was weird. Yeah, did he call him? So <laughs> did he, he didn't actually call the police? police? He didn't call the police. She didn't ask. I didn't oh. ask. Okay, Knock yeah, again. that would have been weird. It didn't, didn't seem like it. Didn't seem like it. No, I didn't want to be like, did you call weird. the fucking yeah, cops? Yeah, that would have been did weird. Did you call the real cops? <laughs> <laughs> no, no need. Did you call the police? Yeah. She's got a badge out. <laughs> what is no going to, on here? No need to call the police. I am the police. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, what's the plan? You feel like the cops aren't coming. What's the plan? All right. I think we should introduce Jesus to Messiah. No. Really <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we have a messiah off. Uh, let's we park our cars across yeah. the street, in a, you know, inconspicuously, place. and yeah. we Take fucking out. wait until okay. nightfall. Right. Let's talk about this, Babe. Yes. You would know that parking your car across the street is going to give you the surveillance opportunities of about twenty percent of the entire house uh-huh. uh, because you're just looking in one window. Right. You know from the uh, shed that you saw in the back of the other house that if you were able to get on that as well at the same time, you would cover two angles, right. maybe nearly 50% of the house. Okay. And then you've got the sides of the house, which are, you know, you're not, you've got blind spots. So think about that and tell me where everybody is. All right. I'll we'll stealth my way to, to the, the shed. Who's taking the sides and who's taking the front? All right. Uh, Bobby will take the front in the car, in one of the cars. I feel like there's been 20 episodes of this series where I've been in the back of a house on top of a shed. Sniper rifle. Yes. Why don't you ask? Roger's like, hold on. He goes into his trunk, pulls out a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this right. I would say, uh, not that I know what the hell I'm talking about, but if I had to guess, if you asked uh, the average police officer or, or, or FBI agent, most likely, or police detective, uh, how often they spend just surveilling a house. I bet you it's often. Yeah. Like, quite often. Definitely, yeah. Uh, so, Roger, give me a stealth check. Okay. Plus 20% because it's night? Yes. It's night already? Okay. Well, glad. he's not going to sneak up there until okay. night. Okay. I'm glad I asked that before I rolled. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> uh, it was a, I rolled a 78 over 74. But now that's a 94, so it's a nice. 78 under 94. Okay, nice. yeah, the you, the cover of night helped you. You were silent enough. The cover it's of night there. helps you, and you get up there, and he now he lays yeah, on this. his stomach with a sniper rifle, and he's just <laughs> looking through the scope at the windows. And you're just, uh, so you see the window you climbed out of. Yeah. And then he's you see watching. the kitchen window. So you're looking at kitchen windows and the one uh, bedroom window, primarily. And he's looking into, like, the neighbor's house to see if you can see uh, anybody getting into the shower. Actually, you can see you can see both bedrooms from there. Any naked people in other houses? <laughs> he's up there. He's got time. 
You see the old lady. <laughs> and he gives people in other houses. <laughs> That's so awful. How about a luck roll? All right, Bobby's out front. What are Neil and uh, Vicky doing? You guys just out front with Bobby? Actually, yeah. I was going to ask, unless somebody goes to the side of the house, Vicky wanted to be out front because she need. I want to go through the mail in the car, you oh. know, with my little flashlight. I just don't want to be outside trying to go through all this fucking mail. Right. You know what? I, can I switch? Yeah, let me let me switch it up. Can I can I sit in uh, the other car? Is that is that possible that I sit in the other car at like Roger's another, car? Yeah, right. Or 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 f- Roger? Do you give him your keys? <laughs> can you give me? Give do me, I give Bobby the keys? Because Roger knows your name yeah. and your address. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. true. Uh, I mean, well, it doesn't have to be Bobby's car. I just uh, Bobby just wants access to a car so that he can slip away at at some point during this stakeout to go to his hotel room. <laughs> Uh, we didn't hear you. Say oh again. shit! I was gonna say. <laughs> just uh, nodding. I, I just saw. It. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I, Bobby wants to just sit in or stay in one car so that he can slip away at some point during the night to go back to the hotel room because there's information that I gotta go get. Can this? Is there a way you can sit? <laughs> you ain't going back to the hotel room. Right? <laughs> uh, is there? Yeah. Is there a way you can sit in a car and look out one side? Because if Vicky's gonna take the front, then you and Neil have to take the sides. If I have. The well, back. I don't think we can. Um, from what I understand of the description of the house, I don't think we can cover the sides because, right. like, it's right up against two other houses. So right. we'd have to like be standing in the wedge middle. ourselves, station ourselves in the six foot space between right. the neighbors. Well, you house made friends with Jesus. Go ahead. Oh, so maybe. Maybe we only have fifty percent, you know, surveillance on the house. If if somebody can't be on the side, which is why don't I try okay. to seduce Jesus, <laughs> and then we can have a nice dinner, and I can sit there looking out the window while we're sit, while the, while we're eating. Okay, interesting. <laughs> well, we, when those fucking lights go on in the house, we're gonna know something's going on. Um, yeah. So at, at a certain point, we just have to. You guys have to at least look in the side windows. Yeah. We could do a lap around the block. You know every two hours yeah, or something. that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Do like a, a sentry kind of situation where yeah. somebody just checks through. That's right. Wait for the water to get warm. <laughs> okay. Vicky's going that's through. Nice. Vicky's Take going through time. the mail <laughs> in the car. Oh, is my <laughs> cold? <laughs> oh, my God. Roger, turn your comm unit off. Just was you can all hear writing it. in my journal. We're still broadcasting. Roger. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Um, okay. Vicky, you are looking through the mail, and the first thing that you're seeing as you guys are waiting is um, bills from the electric company, the gas company, the cable company, and you see the non-response bills and all of a sudden you're just having flashbacks yes. to like Abigail, Abigail Wright. Wright's apartment. Yep. This yeah. is the Hooray. same thing is happening again. And as strange as all of this seems, there are certain things that are exactly the same. As a person who was living a completely normal life and then something happens and they completely begin changing their behavior. They detach from society entirely. What is happening here? You see the shutoff notices for August. The most recently uh, mailed ones in August are shutoff notices. Um, And uh, at that point, you see headlights coming up the street. And a car turns into Barbus's driveway. (sighs) Oh, Oh, my God. Body snatcher. (laughs) Car door open. Hold on, I gotta fucking start rolling <laughs> dice over here. <clears throat> car door opens. Roger, you see the front of the car and you see the car door open and you see stepping out. You see Elias Barbus step out of the car, <sighs> close Exeter. the door. You see Exeter and you're seeing him kind of from the front. You guys are seeing him from the back. I got a clean shot. He walks toward the back. <laughs> now you do and now you don't. He walks out of your view. He walks to the back of his car, to the trunk, which is closer to the far front of the street, and he open, puts a key into his trunk, and he opens up his trunk. You see him reach in, and he grabs a box, uh, and it's empty. It's a Chiquita banana box. It's empty. He pulls it out of the trunk. Just before he closes it, you see multiple other boxes are in that trunk as well, and he, boom, closes the door. Not other Chiquita banana boxes, like 
you see boxes that, uh, yeah, from this distance, I can't give you too many. Well, uh, roll a search. Why not? I'll, I'll give you guys a roll on it. Not you, Troy. Everybody else. Okay. Oh, 13. Lucky 13. Mm, 15. Well, that's pretty good, dude. Yeah. 55. I failed. I failed. I failed. Um, uh, yeah, so Neil, you... Uh, Looking in, uh, looking specifically, you notice that this is a Ford Escape that uh, that he's driving. He uh, opens up the door, or uh, opens up the um, uh, the trunk, and he pulls out this Chiquita banana box, and you see what looks like um, file boxes, like boxes that look like files, and it it reminds you of when you um when you were cataloging evidence for the FBI and there was like uh, there was like police evidence boxes it looks like police evidence file boxes basically uh-huh. are in that trunk and uh he pulls out this empty chiquita banana box and closes the trunk walks up to the front door of the house turns in the key opens the latch and opens the door and closes it behind him <laughs> that thing is right in front of the door and there's yeah. no thing is right in front of the door and you are listening very closely and you hear and you hear some of these sounds of this machine activating and then you hear this loud barking voice coming from presumably Barbus saying something unintelligible and then the sound of the machine stops wow oh. this is fucking pet <laughs> Moments later, you see a bright light, almost like a flashlight, a spotlight goes yeah, on within the house. No electricity in the house. What's that? There's no electricity, so he's got to use his fucking mind yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. And you see this light flashing around from within the living room, and it's going up against those curtains. You're not seeing anything much of significance. Roger, you start to see this light come up through the back bedroom windows. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to feed books at the little door. <laughs> right, he's upstairs now. He's on the second floor. He's on the I've second got, floor. I've got eyes. He's, he's, he's going to the second floor. Uh, he's going to the second floor. You, uh, yeah, I've got eyes. He's going to the second floor. <laughs> you see him come up to the second floor and he goes and you can actually see because you left one of the curtains open when you fled out of there. Sure did. <laughs> And you can see that he's taking uh, these red books from the side of this machine and he's putting them into this Chiquita banana box. And then he walks it over and he walks almost right toward you at that window and that's right near where the closet is. So that closet actually points toward you. And you see him walk in and then he disappears for you out of sight. Presumably he's opening this this closet door yeah man i just feel like this the thing that's printing stuff is printing like typing stuff from another world and barbus is like the conduit to take those printed books and give them to the past like it's so so many levels of crazy Um, (laughs) the the uh, little red book skid do you remember the book um other worlds it was like the upside down book was that book read a world without doors a world yes. without doors yes it was on our board Wasn't it was it? it was read but um this it, what you're seeing is actually more it's funny it's actually interesting i didn't think of this until this moment but it's interesting roger that you saw this because this is reminding you much more of when roger had that weird out of body experience in Michelle Van Fitz's apartment when he was like completely exhausted and Michelle Van Fitz seemed to walk out of the bathroom where Neil was disembodying or, or is, uh, dismembering her. Remember she walked out of the bathroom, right. walked up to the bookshelf, pulled out a little red book oh. and then walked it over to you and handed it to you. And on the front of it was in, in imprinted on the front, the yellow sign. Yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah. And then so. you showed it to everybody. And that was how we ended the episode that, that time. Yeah. I mean, so, it's the play. So, what's that? 
I wonder if it's the play. It's like it's just, it's just cup printing the out copies. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I it's, feel like it's, we've got to get in the house. We have yeah, to confront yeah. Barbus inside the house. Yeah, How do we get it's past safer the outside. Yeah, we can't get past. Well, well, don't forget, we walked in the house, and it wasn't until you got close to that thing that it it wore it up. I think maybe if we he were deactivated to, it. He yeah. might have right. deactivated it, so. or like, I mean, he's going to be a part of it as well. I don't know. I just feel like we swarm. What do we do here? Can we climb up to the second floor? Um, it, not without equipment. You know, you would need to like get a rope up there. Do or we something. want? Do we want a ladder? To a ladder. A ladder. Do we would want work. a surprise, Barbus? What if we just knock on the door? That's my a good only idea. fear. Well, of also, knock- yeah. oh, oh, sorry. I was gonna say my only fear of knocking on the door is that he just goes zippity boo and disappears <laughs> like with some magic <laughs> yeah. trick. How about well, how also about- you've been surveilling the house for about eight minutes? Okay, we keep surveilling. We, yeah. we keep surveilling. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's still a good idea. I think one of us could go up to the front door and then maybe uh, Messiah still got his his sniper rifle trained on him. If he bolts or if he does something crazy, if he comes to the, if he starts leg. running out the back, I can tackle him in the back. I mean, even right. confronting him in the back of the house right. outside, right. we know that these the the security system won't come outside. Right. So if we can just flush him out the back, that's that's a that's a plan. Do you want me to go to the door? Well, let's watch for a couple yeah, more minutes. Yeah, let's, we'll watch. Let's we'll wait. Watch. We'll keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> a couple more minutes. Yeah. Until well, the I'm, I'm, also, I'm still looking through the mail. Do I find anything else? I see the bills. I'm making a pile. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so I mean, well, he pulled up. So you're not watching the house. Robot. You're going to, like, go back to looking at the mail, let Bobby and Neil look at the house. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you go back to looking at the mail, and you see what looks like junk. Junk nothing special uh, junk and then something sticks out to you you think of a world without doors you think of an upside down palace suddenly you're holding in your hands what looks like an old time um, (laughs) postcard and it has a like a European castle on it. What looks like a vaguely European castle or palace on it. And it's like at dusk. So the sun is setting in the background. And so the details of the castle itself are not very visible, but it's kind of a beautiful shot of this kind of castle in silhouette. Do you turn it over? I turn, I turn it over. <gasps> it has no stamp. It has no postmark. These are things that Vicky would be on top of immediately. You see a handwritten note on the back. It's bizarre. It's jumbled. And it's clearly written in code. There are a bunch of letters uh, written in what is complete gibberish, uh, but they are English letters uh, for the most part, with some exceptions, some symbols that aren't English letters or whatever, alpha, whatever. And uh, what is the alphabet called? Because it's the same alphabet. It's not just the English alphabet, right? right? It's like, what is the Roman, Roman, alphabet. Roman. Yeah. So it's just Roman symbols and a few others as well. Vicky, with her intense training in this area, immediately starts thinking of the basics that no one else would think of. You immediately get the sense that the person that wrote this is right-handed and likely male, but it is not Barbus's handwriting. You see some of the letters that at first appeared to be non-Roman letters are actually just backwards or upside down. They're, they're written in weird configurations. Give me. Do you have Sigint or uh, do you have Sigint? Uh, Bobby no. Does. Bobby, I, Bobby's got. Dwarf well, hold on, hold oh, on sorry, a second. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, are you going to share this with Bobby? You say take take a look at this. Not yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. I will if I you know can't. But she, I mean, she's good at codes and ciphers. Like she is really good at them. Could How? I do? Could like, I do like, my? 
forensics or art forger or what about forensics would that not be it not according to the rules not according to what i'm looking at this mm. is you need mathematics or sigint to break a code damn interesting okay i don't have sigint at all i have zero percent and my math math uh, is under a science so like you probably no. don't have math no. so yeah if, if you say that she's a good code breaker um i mean go ahead just g- give me a roll on forensics at minus 20 percent and okay. let's see if we can get through that route. Nope. I'm going to change my dice. I keep rolling fucking 90s. Uh, that's a 94. But I think, I think yeah, she's just trying to think. And she's like, it's just not something she's familiar with. She knows a few codes. Maybe it's not her specialty. Her specialty is like forgery. So not necessarily code breaking, but she can recognize codes. So I think maybe she then says, um, hey, um, makeshift. Are you good with ciphers? Are you good with codes? Yes. <laughs> you, you seem that was like awesome, the type. Bobby. Yes, yes, I You am. seem like the type. Um, give off big code energy. Um, <laughs> could you take a look at this? I can't tell if it's like a functional code or a logical code or I don't know. If just just take a look. I know that it's some sort of cipher. Bobby takes the postcard. Uh, am I rolling? I'm rolling. You're rolling. Uh, oh no, 56 over 40. Shit. At 40. Uh, one yeah. time. One time you use Sigint. God damn. <laughs> you're, you're trying to, to, you're too many distractions right now. You're yeah. trying to decode this while there's a lot of other stuff going on. Right, right. But you get a sense with a little time with this that the code is not unbreakable. Right. You, you recognize it as a cipher that is probably not impossible. And if you crack it, you can probably see what message was written as Bobby is trying to figure this out. Right. Uh, we'll cut back to Roger, who hasn't seen Barbus for a while. He kind of went into what we assume is the closet. He hasn't come out for a while. And I know that back door is open. And you know that back door is open. <sighs> Suddenly, Roger, do you have... Yes. Night vision on your <laughs> scope, on your sniper scope? Yes. <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, I, 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 have, I did not declare that I have that. Um, yeah, so I, I, there's no reason to think I do, unless that's pretty standard. Um, Otherwise, why am I surveilling with it if I didn't, though? <laughs> Yeah. At, night. at night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, did I fucking bring I mean, bring you can this? kind of see from the light within, but this is just a weird situation where this guy doesn't have any power, right? So there's, there yeah. isn't any light coming yeah. within. From I don't think I have night vision. Within. Okay, you don't think you have night vision. So you're just looking through the, uh, you're looking through the lens. And Fuck is this guy? you see movement. You see some light go poom, 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 move around as if Barbus is leaving the closet and, and moving out uh, and about uh, and around in some way. In that moment, a figure steps right up to the window that you're looking at, the bedroom window where the closet is and where you just were earlier, the, in, you know, this afternoon. Yeah. And steps right up to the window. And Roger sees a beautiful, olive-skinned woman with curly black hair in a white, gauzy robe that is just hanging open, basically, in front. Not fully open, tastefully open (laughs) in front. And she opens the curtains outside and seems to look directly at you. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> and at that moment, the back door opens and a light shines into the backyard. Oh and we'll my see you next God. time. Oh my God. What are you going to do? Come on. Come on. Oh man. Look what you did. You imagined what? seeing somebody taking a bath no, and no. then no. you manifested it. No, Great job. Got it. No, you got it. Sydney. <laughs> oh my god. Look at the oh big brain on Brad. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm guys are down. awesome. Oh Thank you so god. much for a great juicy <laughs> sesh. Uh, oh have a have a great night, everybody. As Skit says. We love you guys and we'll Good see you next night, week. Bye. Y'all.